The regular council meeting Monday, July 6, 2015. We'll now come to order at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Five members present. Thank you, sir. Before we go on, if you have a cell phone, would you mind turning it off or putting it on vibrate one or the other, please, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting? And again, thank you all for being here. We definitely appreciate it. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Jeff Birdsall of the First United Methodist Church. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We have enjoyed our Independence Day celebration. We have enjoyed our picnics, we have enjoyed our fireworks, we have enjoyed our family and our friends and time together. But now it is time to put that independence to work by being dependent upon you. It's time for us to, to come together as both citizens and as elected officials. And we ask that you would, with your ever watchful eye, uh, smile upon us with your love and guide us with your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. We'll use the flag in the back for the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I have action on the minutes. We have two minutes. One of them is a regular meeting on June 15th, 2015. And we had a special meeting on June 29th, 2015. Can we combine them? We can combine them, I believe, if you wish. I move we adopt both sets. I don't know. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. Any, any questions? Any comments on the minutes? Okay. Mr. Zayn. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Minutes of 615 and 629 both passed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now we have communication tonight. We have a proclamation honoring the First United Methodist Church and members for over 30 years of free community dinners. Would you mind coming forward, please? Come up here if you would, and I'll come out and join you. I'll read the proclamation. Come on up here. Somebody has a uh, cell phone they can take a picture of because they appreciate the bill. Let me get my camera right outside. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll wait for you, sir. Come on over there, Mike. Come on over. Somebody get on the other side here. There we go. One minute, Bill will be back in this camera. This is a momentous occasion. And I'm really sorry that Alberta's not here. I even asked her, I said, would you please come? And she said, no, because I'm, I'm shy. I don't want to be here. <laughs> She's also an organization. Oh, is she? Yeah. And that might be the other. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready. Okay. We have a proclamation honoring the First United Methodist Church for over 30 years of free community dinners. Whereas the past 30 years, the First United Methodist Church has offered a free community dinner, and whereas this is Alberta Ellis and others have guided this event over the years, and whereas we give pause, honor, and praise this day for the deep and abiding commitment of those who have given so unselfishly during their many years to help bring this community a little closer through food and fellowship, and whereas many citizens in this community have benefited from the influence and guidance of the church for many years and for years to come. And whereas it is a pleasure to extend this expression of the city's appreciation to the First United Methodist Church for offering the free community dinner program. Now therefore, I, Mayor Lowell McLaughlin, issue a proclamation of appreciation to the First United Methodist Church. This was signed on the 6th day of July, 2015. So congratulations. We'll start right here. We'll start here. We'll start right here. I should have gone eight We'll start right here. And who would like to take this with us? Everyone who deserves it. Everyone who Thank you so much. For all and all and, all and all just so you know, we aren't uh, stopping there. We're going to uh, move the... Uh,
Tuesday night dinner to every Sunday, and Rico's going to be yeah. heading up a That's breakfast there. Right. Yeah, we are starting, uh, well, I have started in the last three weeks, and we'll be getting, uh, a Sunday morning breakfast, and it's going to be quite uh, the deal. We are actually going to have omelet made to order, we're going to have bacon, uh, sausage, uh, Mississippi gravy, pancakes made to order, fruit, syrup, whatever you want, pretty much. Uh, it's really big, and the reason we're doing this is because through outreach to the community, uh, we figure it's a win-win. Uh, we can uh, reach out to the community, uh, people come in and, and they might uh, uh, examine the church, might want to actually be a part of the church, and with the issues that the community has, we would like to uh, you know, offer Christ in, in a very positive way. So we are uh, doing some things to uh, outreach to the community. Okay, do you have a time factor on this? Yes, we do. It's from 9 15 to 10 Is that free or is it free? It is free. How could student makers not have missed it? Thank you so much. Okay, committee reports. None tonight? None tonight. Okay. Resolutions done tonight. Uh, we forgot city manager's report. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a city manager's report. We do tonight, have a city manager's report. Boy, I was so fast over top of that. How about the city manager's report? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. I see a, a few familiar uh, new faces in here I've seen before, so just in case I have not met you, my name is Randy Bridge. I am your new city manager, so thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, we do got a little city manager uh, report that we do want to discuss. The first thing is uh, under action report is number two, pay phone contract at Skate Park. Our finance director, Colleen Harris, did report that the uh, pay phone at Family Dollar is not operational. So there is no other pay phone in the area. However, I'm still recommending that we do cancel that contract. Um, everybody's got a cell phone nowadays. Um, it, we pay $75 a month to have this pay phone down there. Um, I submitted last council the the use of staff on those. Um, so hopefully everybody's had a chance to review those. If it's something that you guys want to put off to the next council member for the sake of the two absentees that we have, we can relive the discussion next week. Um, but I would like to cancel that contract at some point. Do we need to vote on that? Is that what you're saying? Um, do we need well, to you have You can authorize to do it, can you not? Right. I, I think there's one down at IGA in that parking lot there. Is there not one? No, just no, the phone's gone. No, you can't close it Again, it seems that it would be you do. You do have to vote. Okay. We do have to vote on that. We have enough here to vote on that. We have five. That would be enough. The majority. The quorum. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to do away with the uh, payphone at uh, Skate Park. Second. Okay, we have. Any comments? Yes, sir. Mr. McIntyre. I want to thank you for getting that list together of how often it's been used. Um, I know I don't have it with me, but when we looked at it, how, how often calls have been made, and we couldn't see where the calls were to and from, just how often it was used. Uh, it, it didn't even come out to one a month. Um, the majority of the calls would be one day someone would make 12 calls in a row to a number, and then it was unused for the next two or three months, it, and it's really not meeting up to putting this much money for it. And sure. We'll probably use that better somewhere else, so thank you for looking into that. And I would like to thank our finance director, Colleen Harris, because she's the one who really pulled all that data. Oh, so, sure. thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Anyone else? Any other comments? Anything? Yes, sir. Mr. Collier, would you call for the vote? Mr. Zambach. Yeah. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Yeah. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass five to zero. All right, uh, the second part of the action report for city managers and fire department investigation. Many of us are very well that the city has hired independent uh, outside investigators to take a look at our fire department. Um, we had a, a anonymous letter that was not signed um, surface. It was mailed to uh, myself, some council members, some media outlets um, that had some pretty serious accusations on there. Um, so we as a city felt that regardless if it was signed or not, it's something that we had to look into. Um, so we do have the results of that investigation in. So if I can just bear with me here, I'm going to just do a little reading. And I will ask that 
all questions uh, just be asked tonight. Our clerk of council will record those questions and I will have answers back uh, by the 20th. And then I will entertain council questions directly tonight. So let me just clarify, you're asking the audience and the news to hold their questions and then you'll get back to them or we'll answer them on the 20th. Is they can correct? ask the questions tonight so we can record them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Are you ready? Dear Mayor Lowell McLaughlin and Vice Mayor Mike Lowry, this evening I'm providing council and the public with an update on matters pertaining to the new Carlisle Fire Department. As you recall, on May 18th, 2015, council approved the, approved the retention of attorney Larry Bennett and former fire chief Bill, Dr. Bill Kramer to launch an investigation into the affairs of our fire department. Both individuals are highly accomplished and neither had any connection or past knowledge into the affairs or individuals in the new Carlisle or its fire department. Thus, we are able to obtain a truly impartial review from these two fire experts. And when I say experts, we should remember this. Dr. Bill Kramer was a department head and the director of fire science at the University of Cincinnati for approximately 20 years, at which time the university appointed attorney Larry Bennett to be his successor. Dr. Bill Kramer has done work for NASA and other various communities, both large and small, both in Ohio and beyond Ohio, addressing operational and investigational needs. Attorney Larry Bennett started his career in public service as an officer, police officer in Washington, D.C., then served as a federal prosecutor for the U.S. Department of Justice in, Washington, in the Washington, D.C. office, then entered private practice and all while actively serving in the fire service area. Both men have, have published authoritative articles and or textbooks in the field of fire science management and have been called upon to speak for their education. Attorney Bennett charged $250 per hour. Dr. Kramer charged $175 per hour. The investigation cost the city of New Carlisle $9,927.75, just under the $10,000 the city budgeted for these two experts to complete their work. I must give special thanks to Attorney Bennett and Mr. Kramer, because as you will soon realize, as, as I next detail their activity, they put far more into this matter than they build the city of New Carlisle for, and they are returning to the city later this week volunteer their time and expertise to hold an all hands meeting with the department to get our men and women who serve our department to a fresh off to a fresh collective start. Before the interviews begin, Attorney Bennett and Dr. Kramer were provided the anonymous letter underlying documents related to the to the this, excuse me. Dr. Kramer were provided the anonymous letter underlying and underlying documents related to it discussed, various items related to local press inquiry and coverage, department operating guidelines, strategic plan, and risk management plan, and also a current list of the platoon. Attorney Bennett and Dr. Kramer were made aware that it, re were made aware that it reminded, remained unknown if any member of the fire department actually wrote the letter, and that several other department members denounced the letter at the May 4th regularly scheduled council meeting. Attorney Bennett in his capacity as legal counsel and Dr. Kramer in his capacity as investigator were instructed by our law director on behalf of the city to do the following. Review any, review any necessary documents, interview any member of the fire department provi providing legal warnings if necessary, and ad advice, of, advice of, of any and all corrective action that needs to be carried out to ensure proper operation of a department similarly situated to that of New Carlisle. During the period of June 15th to June 27th, detailed interviews of 19 members of the fire department were conducted. Interviews were granted to any member of the department who wanted to be heard and provided and provide input into the process. And one former firefighter requested an interview as well, which he was granted. It was, it was deemed necessary for any legal warnings to be given to any member and in, uh, interviewed. After review of the information and upon conclusion of two full days and total of 19 interviews, the following conclusions were reached with regard to the capabilities of the current leadership and the direction in which the fire department is heading. Fire Chief Bradley Phillips is trying to make positive changes and these appear to be embraced by a clear majority of members interviewed. Others are dissatisfied and some would change spending priorities 
but there was no evidence of intentional wrongdoing and no reason why Fire Chief should not continue in his leadership position. Varian's complaints surfaced in an anonymous letter and many were trivial or have been addressed. We submit the following suggested action items for consideration by the fire department. Professional fire chief, professional development. We applaud the current plan for Chief Phillips to complete the state of Ohio cert certifications for fire officer one and fire officer two by the end of the current calendar year. And would also suggest he consider addition professional, uh, prof excuse me, professional opportunities. For example, Ohio Fire Chiefs Association, Resource Symposium, September 12th through September 13th, 2015. New officers, mentoring program, include a ride along with busy fire departments such as Dayton, Springfield, or Cincinnati. Resources were provided to our department to carry this recommendation out. This will increase our members' experience and training opportunities at no additional expense to the department. Officer in charge, 24-7. Pay a battalion chief stipend, including act, acting officers. Eliminate a ch assistant chief stipend. Consider abolishing assistant chief positions and staff on duty, and staff on duty a battalion officer. These changes will put approximately $13,000 back into the annual budget. Filling open shifts. Develop an SOG, standard operating guidelines. Fill open shifts by certification uh, seniority on fire department, paramedics get in first choice, then e EMT basic, then firefighters without EMS certification. Use a committee to draft the standard operating guidelines, officers and non-officers. This will correct members not showing up for their scheduled shifts. Recruitment plan. Fire chiefs propose, propose committee, officers and non-officers should be implemented. Include a re review of hiring processes. This was, would include background checks, including police department check, and also an applicant signing waivers that would allow a prior employer to share information. Physical ability and also a pre-hire physical. EMS runs. Full arrest, stroke, serious trauma, and other ALS advanced life support call automatic mutual aid with the closest neighboring fire department based on location. Avoid missing runs. If, the, if ambulance is on run, utilize proposed on-duty battalion to maximize use of fire department's own resources. This will increase revenue earned by our fire department for EMS runs. Medical direction. Develop quality assurance program, occasional lectures by um, the fire department med med medical director, and resources were provided to our department to carry this out as well. Safety committee. Creation of a safety committee to develop procedures to enhance scene safety for fire and EMS incidents and establish priorities in equipment and inspections and purchases. Day long retreat, all hands meeting. Objective setting format with specific goals, timelines, task force leaders responsible for Im uh, implementation. Working format of this all hands meeting, three hours in the morning, working lunch provided three hours in the afternoon, afternoon session also to be attended by Attorney Bennett. This retreat is scheduled to occur Saturday, July 11th. If you have questions I, I may address, I will entertain those on July 20th. I realize absent from this important meeting are two council members. To the extent that they have questions, I will entertain their questions next week, and I realize council among themselves may want to further discuss the matter next week as well. All this said, please let me make this clear. The city has now expended a significant amount of money and time on this matter. No, ma no member of the fire department has stepped forward or has been identified as a person who wrote the anonymous letter. No wrongdoing on behalf of any fire department member has been identified. End report. Council so basically, Give time. I would like to thank Chief Phillips. You have held your head high through many instances of the public wanting to shoot you down. Yeah. So I appreciate you keeping the safety of our citizens first and foremost. Second part of this, we as a city, we're better than this. We're moving on. If there's a small group of people who don't feel as though the fire department is going in the direction that it needs to be, 
I'm sorry that you have those opinions. But we have this document here saying that for the size of our city, we got a pretty damn good fire department. And it's going to stay that way and it's going to get better. This man has taken this fire department into in the direction it needs to go. And again, I'm sorry if there's a small group of people who may not agree with it, but we're moving forward. Council, questions? Anyone? Comments? Mr. McIntyre. Um, I know you want to move forward. Uh, the we issue do. is that I just spent $9,000 of taxpayer money to get this. And the thing that the, my favorite sentence out of this, out of the whole document, is, is the very last one here where it says, no wrongdoing on behalf of any fire department member has been identified. So any wrongdoing, anything that could be problematic or illegal or whatever it may be, was not identified. Now, in the beginning of the report, it said that um, some issues were brought up in, in this letter, um, some of this hearsay, some of the issues that you know, was, was sent anonymously to us and to members of the community. Um, it, it said that some of these had been addressed and rectified. However, the fire department handles these, whatever it is, time off, or you get in trouble for it, or whatever it is. Um, so my question that I have, and I don't know if this is something that you could answer, because I know you've been working with the investigators or not, the allegations were pretty serious. So is it a situation where they were made up, or is it a situation where it appears serious, but it's sort of a day-to-day -day thing that has already been handled? Because if it was something that was made up and we spent $9,000 chasing you know, lies down a rabbit hole, I have some serious issues with that. So, And as you should, and it's a good observation, you know, from what I, you know, they didn't uncover anything for these investigations to allow this investigation to really go any further. You know, so, I mean, to answer your question a little bit better, I mean, we can just assume some of it was probably legit because some of it's been reported to the state. Uh, was it reported in all honesty? We don't know. Again, nobody came forward about that letter. What I think happened is one person from the fire department probably grouped up with people outside the fire department to write that letter and then submit it to us. When you have 19 people who don't admit to it, and anytime there's an investigation going on, at some point in time, if there is any wrong, legit, somebody's going to crack. Nobody cracks. That should tell everyone here that it was not an internal fire department letter. I, I still don't believe it was. I think, I think the specific answer to your question comes from the investigators when they wrote various complaints surfaced in an anonymous letter and many were trivial or have been addressed. So it has been taken care of. If it was true, it's stuff that has been addressed, and we have the capabilities to address them. Okay. Thank you. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just, Randy, I was just curious. So no one comes forward on this letter. We have no name. You know, you can't, you can't attach it to anyone or any group or any organization. A year goes by. This time next year, another letter pops up. What what's going to be the process, or what's going to be the you know what would we do if another one was come up more or less? What's what are we how are we going to handle it? Are we going to just you know if there's no signature to it, does it just get does it get tossed aside because it doesn't hold any weight because there's no name to it, or what would be the ideal way to handle it? I think it all depends on what the letter says. Okay. To be quite honest, I, didn't, I don't know how else to answer that. The letter says that, hey, fire department is great, but however, you know, um, I saw a guy sitting outside smoking a cigarette or, you know, whatever the case may be is right. one thing. Now it says, oh, I saw your fire department and they made another run without many uh, certified people on there, the billing for it. It's something that we're hopping across that bridge when we get there. We should, our citizens should know that we take things pretty serious at this point in time. You know, we're not going to just sweep it under the rug. I think we're all going to be a little bit smarter next time it comes around, you know. Um, but I think that City Council, you guys made the right decision with going through with this first initial one. Without Chief, I think the Chief wanted to say something to that. Uh, I mentioned uh, at one point, I mentioned the City Manager Bridge really briefly uh, that I pulled some fire departments in the area, some cities in the area, just using my own resources. And it seems to me that, that cities in the area or cities in general have some sort of ordinance about a complaint process. There's a process that people have to follow to lodge a complaint, whether it's a complaint in, in general about the city um, or about a specific department. So what I will be proposing in the future is something for all of you to maybe entertain an ordinance that would re 
require a certain process for complaints. Uh, we are internally in the fire department going to put some SOP in place, a standard operating procedure that requires our members to put their name to a complaint to have a complaint inside the department. And it, it will give them an opportunity to go to Mr. Bridge if it's something that is so egregious that they don't want to discuss it with me. But uh, the focus will be on, you know, we're all adults. Let's be adults about it. Let's deal with the issue internally before we have to go outside of the program. You said other communities about our size have ordinances in place for that type of thing? Right. Our size and order. Could you see if you could locate a couple of those and give them to our city manager, if you would, please? And our law director to see if we would like to work on something like that? Certainly. Would appreciate it. I'm sorry, yes. Sir. I was just going to say, Mr. Mayor, we, we very well could establish a policy like that to allow individuals that want to voice their concerns a procedure to follow, but nothing will stop an individual or group of individuals from putting forth an anonymous letter. Right. I understand. Rick, did you want to? Yeah, yes, so. thank you. Um, it stated there was 19 people interviewed. How many people were on the fire department? Uh, currently, there's 42. So less than half were interviewed? Well, everyone was giving out. Every, okay, everybody. that was going to be my next question. Were there people who refused or were conveniently couldn't, was not available for those two days? Well, you know, time was money in this situation. Right. So we gave them the dates of the interviews. If they were unable to make those dates, we're sorry for their... The investigators were present. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The investigators were present for two full days. Um, and you know, starting in the morning until late in the afternoon. Okay. And on the second day, anyone wanting to be heard from had an opportunity to come in. And there was no individual who requested an interview that did not have the opportunity to have an interview. So from my perspective, everyone that wanted to participate and offer their input and perspective, they were all heard from, including a former firefighter. Okay. Well, out of that too, and correct me if I'm wrong, not only did they get to come in, but they were also setting up phone interviews as well. Setting up what? Phone interviews phone and call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You know, I, I wanted to add this to my <coughs> end of my reading, but I did, I asked one of the investigation if you could sum it up in one sentence, what would that sentence be? And he said, those who show up and want to work have no issues with the fire department. It's the old. It's the form. It's the group of people who want to show up, do nothing, and still get paid that have the issues. I personally, I, I personally think that the majority of this came from four different people, and I also personally believe that three of them was not even on the fire department. I can't name names, uh, but that's what I believe, and I, I, you know. It's kind of sad that those people cost the city of New Carlisle almost $10,000. And I hope you all sleep well, and I really do. I hope you sleep very, very well, knowing that the city who pays your wages and you live in, and you took $10,000 away from them. Sad. Very, very sad. Thank you. Mr. Zambach, any, any comments? Anything? Well, I agree with Mr. McIntyre. No wrongdoing on the behalf of any fire department member has been identified. We did not want this investigation in the first place. We certainly believe that $10,000 of fire department money could be much better spent on necessary fire department items. But due to the seriousness, we, our law department advised us that we should take it under consideration to make absolutely certain there was nothing there. This investigation was conducted by entirely independent people with no input whatsoever from city administration or council. And the chief has been vindicated, his department has been vindicated. Uh, the two losers in this are the finances of the fire department and of course the loser that made these false charges for whatever silly reasons a fool like that may have. Thank you, Mr. Zamba. Anyone else? Yes, something else? Yeah, one more. Just I just wanted to double up on what Randy said, Chief. Uh, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, it's 
standing proud and to all the all the members of the fire department that showed up at that meeting a month or so ago and, and, and spoke your piece on the behalf of the fire department. I know we had all said that it spoke volumes when you showed up and it did and it clearly proves what you all said. So thank you to everyone in the department that showed up that night. Shall we go to the audience now and see if they have questions and you say we'll just do it during public comment. During public comment? Yeah. Okay, you want to continue on, please? Yep, uh, moving on uh, and the item number four under the action report discussion on potential sale of city owned property. City Council, please forgive me. I meant to do a little map and show you what I was talking about. So, this is something we might have to put on to, to uh, 20. So, really, this is just a very initial discussion on this to see if Council would even be willing to entertain it. Mr. Bailly, Bailly uh, lives at um, South Clay. Uh, 315 South Clay, and that is the parcel of land that is behind Madison Street School. Okay, uh, he would like to see if the city would be willing to sell a small portion of the back portion of the Madison Street School property. It's up on top. What's what should be up there? Rocks and dump sites, or what's up towards the top? No, it's just the, it's the hip up on top of the hill. Up on top school of the hill. School work. There's just nothing up there. It's just grass. I mean, we're talking about a quarter of an acre, a third of an acre, an acre, less than. A third, do we know what it is? You know, I honestly, I did not bring the stuff I needed to bring for it, so I do okay. apologize. That was my, my Is he fault. planning on doing, having the survey and everything done on it to put the bill on that? I haven't got that far with him. This is the first initial so council. you'd like to know whether we would be up for if it? If you're even up for it or not, because if not, then there's really no reason to go any further. I, Mr. Mayor, uh, to be used for what? You just add it on to your backyard, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Would it landlock the rest of the property if it's just if it's in the center of up on top there? If people bought, if other individuals bought property around it or a business, it's not that much of, uh, of the overall parcel. Of land. I don't have the right exact okay. numbers, but it's not that much. It's, and I actually talked to David Fleck about it because of the land based situation with that school. That particular part of that is not even worth because of the stuff that's in it. Okay. You know, so. Um, Again, it's something if, it, well, I'll revisit this on the 20th and have some probably more definite okay. stuff with you. Um, but with the fire investigation, it, it's just kind of got mm -hmm. lost. So I do Mr. McIntyre has a question. You probably don't have the information because it's real preliminary. Um, didn't we rezone that whole area for single family housing? So would that be like a single lot by itself or we'd, we'd have to divide a lot? He would have to, we'd, we'd split that off and then he would have to combo it onto his existing parcel. And you'll have all that information when we. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions on that, Council? Okay. No. Then moving on is just the new Carlisle House stuff's health stats are attached. So when you get a minute, just take a look at those. Oh, you have something? Yeah. Mr. Kitko, our service director, also has an update as well. Uh, just two quick things. Uh, Prentice Drive, uh, phase two plans were finished up today. Getting those over to county to bid that out. That will take it from phase one, uh, completed area two. Kennison. Uh, I'm expecting the next two to three weeks to be the bidding phase, which the county does, as I said, and then we'll know what kind of, um, if we're at our estimated cost or under, and then I will proceed from there on the couple streets I've been working on for our local projects to use our funds uh, locally. And then um, another update is after the uh, pre-construction meeting with uh, RV Jurgens in the county, the Closure is estimated between the 22nd through the 27th of July. Uh, it depends on how early, when they get their equipment in to reconstruct or replace the new Palau Pride Bridge down at the, by the pool. Uh, dates this, again, Alan. I'm sorry? Dates again, I didn't hear. Oh, um, the, the closure could be anywhere between July 22nd and July 27th. Um, that is very tentative. Uh, if for some reason, let's say, some of their equipment on another job didn't get in, they may go a little later but we don't see it too, uh, much earlier than that. They have a contract completion date of October 9th. So it's an estimated 75 days for that project. So I just wanted to update you on that. And if you know people, pass it around you know, on their workaround, but it'll be completely shut down the whole time. And that is all I have. Thank you. You good? All right. And I think that is all we have for the city manager report this, this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions for the city manager? Council. Okay. Committee reports. Again, there are none tonight. None this evening, sir. Thank you. 
Resolutions there are none. Mm -hmm. We have two ordinances being introduced. If you would please. Mr. Collier. Oh, I'm sorry, did we not get there? We didn't, did we? Once again, I forgot something. <laughs> must be age. I think it must be age. I need to take some more of that supplement. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, action on the minutes, we've done that. And we need to have uh, comments from members of the public. Is there anyone that would like to speak on anything at the moment? Yes, sir, if you go up to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Identify yourself. Uh, Ronald Cobb, 202 Bill Drive. I'd like to address something to the chief if I can. It's nothing dirty. I'm glad to see you got the monkey off your back. Now, do you plan on going forward in recruiting volunteers? I am. Okay. That's what I want to know. I've seen that on Facebook already. Yep. Well, I don't. I'll explain yeah, it's been on Facebook asking for recruits and so on. I want to ask you that, and I'll deal with it. Y'all have got the monkey gone, so. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Someone else, please. We have one in the back first there. Yes, Dale, go ahead. Identify yourself, please. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street, and I am speaking as a citizen of this fine city, not in my professional uh, position. I like it when you said fine city. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I love living here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have several council members who have a problem with speaking without thinking what they're saying. I'm hearing people complaining that we wasted $10,000. What I see is we spent $10,000 for a study. And we got more than that out of it. Number one, it, it, we got, we got uh, recommendations that have been, if implemented, number one, will result in a smoother run fire department. And number two, will save the city $13,000 a year. Now, when I went to school, $13,000 was a little bit more than 10,000. And that's just one year. So I'm glad we did the study. It's, it's good for the city, and as one who helped pay part of the $10,000, very small part, but I think it was money well spent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else, please? You go up to the podium, please. Bill, we have someone else here, please. Then you're next. Go ahead, Nancy. All right, I didn't see He's quick to jump up. <laughs> Nancy Levanovich, 505 Pease Drive. And I know we want to move on from this, but in moving on, you're also bringing up the possibility of a procedure to take care of it in the future. And my, I, I go two ways. Either whoever sent the letter uh, was a coward and didn't sign it, or was afraid to lose his job. Now, I know there's been whistleblowers and in the past, they've lost their job. So I, I can see either way. So in this procedure that we're thinking about, I want to make sure that there is something there because I didn't hear, did you say they had a chance to call in on the interviews? If they couldn't show they up could, on the two scheduled they days because up. of the prior obligations, they could have phoned in their interview. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they would, was that under uh, the, the, the promise that they would remain anonymous no so there okay. were no anonymous interviews okay so that then i really couldn't see anybody coming forward if they didn't sign the letter okay but please make sure that there's something about that in the next procedure that we look at so we know are you are you following me absolutely all right yep. thank you thank you for your comment mr lindsay I believe you're next. William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. I'm being stared at. <laughs> uh, in your reading, uh, Mr. Bridge, did you say that we had money coming for some of the uh, education and stuff for the chief? I'm trying to see if I understood what you were saying. I, what do you mean we have money? We have, well, we have reimbursement if he would like to get reimbursed. We have, oh, you mean the city will reimburse him for, for taking two. these other classes, courses, whatever whatever that said? Improved training, sure. Pardon me? Impro we will reimburse him for improved training, yes. Okay. 
Uh, the next question is for the chief, because you probably don't know it. What is the fire rating uh, status of New Carlisle? That affects our... Yes, thank you. Because I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> I'm old. Okay, and that, that, that affects all of our homeowners' policies, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. Four is very great for a city of this size. Uh, I, I know that. I just couldn't think of what the letters were. Gotcha. Uh, it's an old thing, you know. Uh, we're not as young as you guys over there. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else like to speak from the audience? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for your input tonight. Again, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Now, can we go to uh, reading of... I think we're good. If I missed anything, <laughs> thank you, Bill. Thank you for keeping me on sure. the ordinances. Ordinances, if you would, please, Mr. Cobb. Uh, before I read the ordinances, I just, I just want to make note of a typo on the agenda. Both of these ordinances are introductions tonight. They won't be acted on tonight. So, Ordinance 15-28, introduction night, public hearing and action on 7-20-2016. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to renew a contract for the replacement of vending machines in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 15-29, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7-20-2016. An ordinance amending ordinance 14-09 regarding the agreement with American United Life Insurance Company for employee long-term disability insurance services. Thank you, sir. Other business, we need to excuse Mr. Prebacher and also uh, Ethan, if we would please invite, should I get in? Can we do them together or do we need to do that separate? Mr. Mayor. I think we can. I'm asking our law director the question. Excusing council members, Mr. Reynolds, do, can we do them together? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll entertain a motion, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to excuse Ethan Reynolds and John Craybocker. Second. Okay. Any comments? Anything, council? Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Passed five to zero. Thank you. Would you mind reading the rest of the business here, please? Other business. There'll be a crime watch meeting uh, this Wednesday, July 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. There'll be a Chautauqua concert July the 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park. And the Farmer's Market will be every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the downtown area. So I have. Thank you. The farmer's Market's been going very well. They've had bad weather. They did not have it last weekend because of the holiday, but it will uh, take off again. Unfortunately, it looked like it, it's like it's going to rain again this Saturday. That's not a good thing. They've been fighting it. I bought some tomatoes and some zucchini and uh, it's very good. So anyway, uh, I forgot to announce that pool passes are still available. Uh, the pool is almost breaking even at this point. Actually, do you have anything you can tell us, please, Mrs. Harrison? Um, off the top of my head, I just pulled the report. Maybe, maybe Mr. Lowry could inform us. Yeah. Let me Everybody me. always wants to know about, Not you on about the pool. Yeah. The okay. Available. This is a as of the end of the June report, correct? Uh, total expen expenses for the pool, uh, $27,526.23. And revenue for the pool at the end of the last month, $25,000, $25,288.46. So even with, with the rough weather we've had with the rain, it's, it's actually doing a lot better than what I expected as of right now. It's good news. It's uh, almost breaking even, which is a good thing. Hopefully, we get some weather that can get over that hump. That would be even better. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the shelter house here is always available uh, for rent. If you would like to rent the shelter house, you need to call uh, the city building, which is 845-3936 or 3639. Let me 
lost. City building my number? Yes. 845-9492. 9492? <laughs> yeah. 3639, where did that come? I have no idea. Like I said, I need some more of that supplement. No doubt about it. Hey. 604-2121. Lowell, that must be your private line. Uh, it might be. That's cemetery fair. lots. If anybody That's needs a cemetery fair. lot, we definitely have lots for sale. Nicolau Cemetery. You have something? Other business? Mr. Lowry has something. Um, Chief, Chief Phillips, I'd, I'd like to, uh, and if, if you're not comfortable doing this at this time, I, I completely understand, but I'm going to ask you, is there anything you'd like to say after what's been said? Well, it's been a long couple months. Um, I think we, uh, I'll hear uh, Mr. Grimm's comments. I think we've got our money's work as far as the investigation goes. So we're ready to move on from here. We've, uh, the action items that they gave us, we've implemented quite a few of them already. So uh, we're on the right track. So we want to get it done. Thank you. Good to hear. That's great. Yep. Anyone else? Any other comments? Anybody in the audience, anything else you'd like to say? No. Mr. Lindsay? Uh, William Lindsay, 314 North Henry. On the implementation of procedures according to, for the fire department, if somebody would come forward, and I've been on both sides of this, because I've been on two different departments, so I've been on both sides of, of this problem that's going on, that was going on. Uh, the reason people won't sign letters because they don't want to be fired. They don't want to be hassled by command. They don't want the chief because he is the chief and it wouldn't matter if he was the chief or if this man was the chief. They would ride them. It's just nature in that field to do that, to get them to leave. If it's something can be put into whatever you guys come up with to where there would be no repercussions on the individual if he came forward and went and talked to the chief and the chief says, now you're wrong and we're going to put it to you, then he would have that opportunity to come to city manager and then from there to council possibly. They, they've got to be something in there to protect their jobs if they really want the job, if they feel they have a legit concern. Does that make, any, does that make sense to you, chief? Does that make sense to you? Chief. Well, yes, they have to go through chain of command. We have a bunch of people that wandered outside of that. Right. As long as they follow the chain, I, and I understand that. They should follow chain of command. So, I mean, I don't mean to upset you guys, but they need to follow chain of command. It's just that simple. Uh, but if you don't agree with that, then maybe you're in the wrong profession. There's no room for anonymous letters when you have to follow the chain of command in the paramilitary. And I understand that, ma'am. The, uh, the what I'm saying is if somebody brought something forward and went through the chain of command, took it to the chief, of course, he has a lieutenant, he has a, a, a captain, and I assume still assistant chief to go through before he ever gets to him. If the, if the problem can't be solved, he should have that right to wind up going to the, to the city manager with a problem he feels that is not being addressed. In my experience, when there's problems like that that comes up, whatever the problem is, once it gets to the chief, the chief makes the final decision and that pretty much is it. He is the law of the land at that department. It's just like the sheriff's the law of the land in the sheriff's office. So, I mean, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Appreciate it. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. I would entertain that. I move. We adjourn. <laughs> we don't have We're now adjourned.